things were not equal for everyone, but were equal, I guess you would say, for someone. And I wanted to be that someone. We all wanted to be that someone. Well, the first couple of years, you know, was tough. It was tough. First of all, you know, there wasn't that many of us blacks down here at the time. We felt alienated. We felt put to the side, ostracized. Some people may disagree, but if you weren't there and the one that was happening to, you wouldn't understand it. Every day, every day, every day, you had to prove your worth to show, you know, to show the dispatcher that, you know, that I can do it too. When we were at the old hall, and you got picked over, picked around. That, that's the dispatch system they had, and that went on for a long time. It was customary back in those days that the, I hate to say it like this, you know, the white gangs picked the white guys and the black gangs picked the black guys. So, you know, between Claxton's gang, Willie Lee's gang, Jefferson's gang, Canada's gang, we knew when they come upstairs to pick, they picked us brothers because that's the only way us brothers would get picked at the time. There's a lot of people that were here and they left because they didn't want to put up with the discrimination. Over time, we rose up through the ranks, fought it, protested, we even got involved in a lawsuit. When that all started, it, it kind of brought a lot of the black longshoremen up and down the coast together. It wasn't just blacks, but there were whites that felt that this was a union and we were all part of it. You know, when Harry Bridges came to blacks and asked him to stop, you know, crossing the picket line, he'd give us jobs. That's where it started. I also did a lot of traveling and the one place I traveled to was Coos Bay. I used to go down there all the time. And uh, three other guys I used to travel with, Andre Barber, the late John Evans, and Mark Conley. Mind you, I was a B-man and I'm down there traveling and I'm working logs again. But uh, it's casual and a bunch of them were standing over on this platform, on this podium, and he said, get your guns out, the coons are back. So a guy behind the dispatch window heard it and he come out there and he dressed those guys down and he let them know. He says, these are our union brothers. They got a right to work down. They have a right to travel down here. And at that moment, that's when I felt like, hey, I'm part of this organization. You know, we all felt that way. It took a while for the system to change. I think it took a lot of, uh, a lot of fighting screaming and hollering. Over the period of when blacks were rising up and we were trying to establish ourselves because we felt that young black men, they need to see us in those positions. They need to see us driving crane. They need us to see as supervisors. They needed to see us as crane drivers and as foremen. I'm here because of what my forefathers have done. You know, the Ernie Tanners, the Ike Morrows, the Greg Blacks, Doug Woods. I'm here because of them, Perry Hook, their example, what they had to go through, how they fought through it, and were successful on the job as crane drivers, as walking bosses, as supervisors. I'm here because of them. I was one of the first generations came in post Blanchfield lawsuit. And what it did was it taught the hateful people how to either retire or learn how to close their mouths. I'm not gonna act for a second as if those lawsuits and the judge's gavel made their hearts become righteous and pure all of a sudden. They just learned that they can either retire or learn how to work with other people they may not love in a safe and respectful manner. We weren't just looking to have fairness and equality, we were looking to prolong our existence on the waterfront, okay? And if we didn't do that, probably you would not have those that are here today. Once certain individuals were disempowered, let's just call it that, disempowered, it allowed people like me 
and other black and brown members and other um, females and younger members and maybe homosexuals, lesbians, whatever. It allowed them the opportunity to prove themselves as workers. I think hard work is our resume. It doesn't matter what color you are because you're moving cargo, you're doing the job. And um, that, that says a lot. You get a lot of respect just by having that strong work ethic and having that, that high skill level. There are some people I've, I've ran across here that treat black people, brown people, any first generationer on the waterfront like we are guest workers at their family business. Like their family's name's on the cornerstone of this local or this waterfront. And that, that's not how this union works. That's not how these locals work. That's not how the working class works. No, we have every right to be here that they do. Maybe they came down a generation or two generations before us because they had the opportunity that my grandfather didn't have. But guess what? I'm here. I'm here now and I'm not leaving. Is it perfect? By no means. It will never be perfect. Um, but there is a route and there is a way. We have awesome grievance machinery. So if you ever do run into situations, if you can't handle it on the job, if your foreman can't handle it, there is grievance machinery and for the most part that grievance machinery works. You can't let it stop you. You just can't. You have to do what you're here to do. And that's take care of yourself and your family, make your living, and you have every right to be here. If I'm gonna work for a living, this is how I want to do it. It's a great job. It's a phenomenal job. This isn't just any ordinary job. This is a this is a job you have to mature for. I can drive any piece of equipment. I got the knowledge and the know-how and the power and the might to do it just as good as anybody else. Give an opportunity to do so, I'll show you. This is what unionism is all about. This is what it's really all about when you get down to it. When we have no discrimination based on race, age, sex, religious belief, that's, that's us. An injury to one is an injury to all. We have some history down here, and it's, and it's a great thing, and we'll continue to make that history because there's so many black men and women coming up behind me. Um, we'll keep moving cargo and doing it well.